assume they were used for. Neither the artist nor the politician is inherently good or bad. Neither one is necessarily socially conscious either. Or for that matter, neither one is inherently career-oriented, money-hungry, attention-seeking, or narcissistic. Each one can be socially conscious, committed to making the world better and more beautiful. And what each artist decides, what each individual must choose for herself or himself is quite simply, do I want to help others or do I want to simply serve my own interests? Each of them, the artist and the politician, must decide, do I want to help other people or do I want to simply serve my own personal interests? Each must decide, what will I do that will make the place where I live, struggle, work, and play a better and more beautiful place? A place where children can grow and develop, where love can flourish, where we can support networks and social safety nets to ensure that each and every individual, both child and adult, is loved and cared for. What will I do to advance these things? These are the questions that must be asked. And when you ask and answer those questions, your art work, your political work will reflect that. So when you see bullshit art, you know why. <laughs> how does my art, how does my art, how does my activism make this world better and more beautiful? How does my art, how does my activism make this world better and more beautiful? Not the world inside my head, not the world that's gone, not the world that's not here, but this world. We should ask ourselves, how does what I do make this world better and more beautiful? If you're not making the world better and more beautiful, you're fucking it up and making it up there. <laughs> and each of us, we have to answer this question. And in answering the question, we define our relationship and every relationship between arts and activism. During periods of social movement, the answer is obvious. During periods of repression, resistance is the identifying characteristic. During periods of repression, resistance is the identifying characteristic. Too often, our major problem is that we don't know specifically what our problems are. That's our problem. We don't know what our problems are. And if we look to politicians and artists to tell us what our problems are, if they don't know what the problems are, how can they tell us what the problems are? And if they don't tell us what the problems are, how can they tell us what the answer is? You can't give them the answer if you don't know the damn problem. If you don't know what's wrong, how can you suggest what's right? Historically, to be black has meant to be at odds with the status quo, to constantly engage the present in a struggle to create a better future. Historically, we have defined truth and beauty in terms of the examples of our ancestors, men and women, who gave us the opportunities we enjoy today. Truth and beauty should not be abstractions, but the everyday example of how we live, how we are living in the here and now. Truth and beauty must be measured by the future realities of our people as a whole and not just the televised examples of specific individuals living large while the masses suffer. In the final analysis, first, last, and always, the goal must be to improve relationships, to improve relationships, to improve relationships, to be better and more beautiful. Who we are and how we live is the measurement of art and politics. What does it profit a person to gain a fortune but have a fucked up family life? What does it matter if we have big mansions and fast cars if we don't have safe streets and prosperous communities? 
There is no real art, no real activism without a struggle to create and maintain truthful and beautiful relationships. There is no real art of any value, no real politics or activism of any value if it is not about creating a better world to create better and more beautiful relationships. That's the answer to the question. What a, I got a short answer for the second question. What are, what are the roots of arts and activism in the city of New Orleans? Other places have soup, we got gumbo. Other places walks, we bounce. Other places march, we second ride. The roots of arts and activism in New Orleans is the black, that is the African impetus to always, always, in any and every possible way, make life pretty. To make the food good. To whistle while we work. And make love every chance we get. Indeed, indeed, every minute we live ought to be an act of love. Hence, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we do what we do and be down here in the big EZ. We are the root and the foundation. Everything else is just an addition or an extension of black life. All right. And how does Project D fit into the larger picture? Now this last question, I'm going to take a slight detour, which I, don't, I, I think I'm the youngest person in the room. So, so if I say something that's, that's you know, like why, 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 you know, that's because I'm learning how to talk. But check this. The location was the Florida Housing Project, right? Right? Did you realize that the housing projects, when they were built, they were segregated? Desire was the black, the Florida Housing Project was the white. Did you know that? There was a time period in the 40s and the 50s where black people couldn't live in the Florida housing project. They had to go across the track, across the canal, and live in design. But the public housing was built by the government for poor people. You know that today, 100,000, this is documented. In fact, the exact, they have the exact number, and I don't have it with me, but it's a little bit over 100,000, like 100,000, 300 and some so people are not, who are living in the city of New Orleans before Katrina are not returned. Damn near every one of them is black and poor. The reason they tore the public housing project down is to make sure there was no more niggas in New Orleans. That's what, that was their goal. And they damn near done it. Mm -hmm. They damn near done it. Because what they've done is made it impossible, impossible for poor black people in mm -hmm. mass to live in this city, even though it was poor black people that built this city and created the culture that is celebrated in this city. <laughs> and that, so that when 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 Project B operates in the Florida Housing Project, it's more than a notion. It's more than a notion. And whether we are aware of the historical antecedents, that is what came before, and, and what that means, in no way, shape, or form, whether we're aware of it or not, does that negate the fact that what we're doing is fighting the status quo. What you did was fight the status quo, whether you are aware of all the ramifications of that fight. But believe me, City Hall understood. City Hall understands what's going on. And that what you have is the same thing that happened at Congo Square. It's the same thing that happened to the streets. That's why they passed the noise ordinance. How are you going to say it in New Orleans, the place that the music comes from, that at 8 o'clock you gotta stop playing music. What the fuck is that? I mean, <laughs> 8 o'clock? So, 
I told you I was going to do a little detour, but you have to understand, if, if you can't put everything up, whatever you put together is not going to stand. Right? right? Mm -hmm. You've got to walk on two feet. You've got to know your history, right? And where you're headed. Where you're coming from, where you're going to. You've got to know both. And so, as we grasp where we come from and we can begin to see where we're headed to, we have to move with that understanding and embrace everybody. Embrace all of us. I appreciate everybody here listening. Thank you.